Timing will be everything as the next weather pattern settles in, and it will all start with a feisty front traversing the central and eastern states in the next few days. From there, lots of uncertainty comes into the picture, and that will include a possible tropical storm or hurricane that has the Gulf Coast and East Coast eyes peeled. This video has all the details in 10 minutes. Getting right into the details, the pattern will kick off active for a lot of the U.S. into the start of the upcoming week thanks to this jet stream dip and associated cold front. Notice all of the moist air moving ahead of this early fall front as far north initially as the Great Lakes region. This will fuel rounds of showers and thunderstorms to start and even go towards the middle of this week. They will bring mainly heavy rainfall and isolated flooding, but even the threat for a few severe wind gusts and some hail in some instances. Let's bring up my custom weather map for Sunday, September 22nd of 2024. It clearly shows our broad area to watch, spanning from central Texas to as far north as Michigan with scattered to widespread showers and storms. Isolated severe weather could also get in the mix along this cold front, but the most elevated threat will actually be flooding, particularly for the yellow shaded areas centered on the Midwest. There will be plenty of warmth building up to support these end of the weekend downpours as high temperatures are expected to surge back into the 80s for much of the region and surrounding spots Sunday afternoon. These numbers are running as much as 10 to 15 degrees above average as my graphic shows. Meanwhile, 15 degree below average air will be behind the front, spilling into the central plains and sending morning temperatures down to the 40s and low 50s Monday. Speaking of Monday, our pesky rainmaking front will be slowly on the move eastward into the day. The heaviest downpours and flooding risks appear like they will be focused closer to the Ohio Valley as Monday rolls on, although isolated shower and storm chances should continue from Texas to the Mid-Atlantic in the green shaded areas. Tuesday's weather map indicates that the front will be slowing down, which could mean more scattered rainfall from the southern plains to the Ohio Valley and northeast once again. This could be a third day of on and off downpours in states like Ohio and into Pennsylvania, so I have a highlighted area in yellow to emphasize this flood risk. Despite flooding being an issue, we actually do need quite a bit of water in this corner of the country as there has not been much coming out of the sky recently. The latest drought monitor update actually has parts of Ohio and West Virginia in the highest level of drought conditions called exceptional. Other areas being affected by the same front through Tuesday as far south as the southern plains are also in at least some form of drought and need some of this rain. Just to recap the first few days of this week, here's a look at the total rainfall from the European model. A solid swath of states will likely pick up a few inches of rain with low locally higher totals through just Tuesday afternoon and evening, and yes, this will probably include the worst drought-stricken areas with at least an inch or two in the Ohio Valley. It is anticipated that this front will continue east into the New England and East Coast states by Wednesday, although some model disagreements are in place already for this time. The European model generally indicates isolated storm coverage that picks up the further up the East Coast you go Wednesday and Wednesday night. Meanwhile, the GFS model agrees on that, but has an additional area of heavier rain through Tennessee and back towards Texas. The reason these showers and storms are important isn't just for the rain and lightning on Wednesday, but also for the impacts the position of this front will have on a tropical entity moving in at the end of the week from the south. I'll break that impact down a little bit more later in the video. Before that discussion, I do want to bring back up the temperature changes behind this front, starting with the graphic I already showed for Sunday with warm air ahead of the front and cool air behind it. This difference will still be noted by Monday and Tuesday, as you can see in this new graphic, with a cooler swath of air of at least 5 degrees below average into the Midwest, while the southeast states remain ahead of the front and therefore 5 to 10 degrees above normal. The biggest round of warm air for this week will be slowly on the rise into the northwest U.S. Tuesday as well. Here's a visualization of the early week anomalies with actual numbers, starting with Monday's forecast highs from the National Digital Forecast Database. You can see the continued 80s and 90s with south winds in the southeast, while the northern plains, central plains, Plains and Midwest continue to fill in with widespread 70s and even some 60s. The anomalies don't move much since the front doesn't into Tuesday. Don't get used to the cool air in these central and north central zones though because warm air is going to make a big return by Thursday with increasing ridging behind the front. This clip from the GFS model does an excellent job of showing the increasing mid-level high pressure through central Canada which will bring a jog up in temperatures for much of the northern tier by the end of the week. I do want to point out that these models would not be available to me without the great people at Weatherbell and their hard work into making awesome weather graphics. If you want the same access to maps that I use in my videos for yourself, make sure you're clicking the link in the description of this video to get your free trial with them. One other reminder before I continue is for those of you who are not yet subscribed to my channel, I'm currently on the way to 6,000 YouTube subscribers and would love for you to be one of them as I consistently improve content. My videos will likely include once per week well-edited videos like this one and other videos in between providing 
more of a detailed update on specific parts of the pattern. If you want that accurate content and someone who answers your comments, questions, and concerns, I'd definitely love it if you'd hit the subscribe button and that like button for free below. Now back into the video, it's time to discuss this 60% chance of tropical development designated by the National Hurricane Center, which will likely rise chance-wise even more after I post this video. Quoting the NHC, a broad area of low pressure is likely to form by the early to middle part of next week over the northwestern Caribbean Sea and the adjacent portions of Central America. Thereafter, gradual development of this system is possible and a tropical depression could form as the system moves slowly northward across the Caribbean Sea and Gulf of Mexico through the end of next week. I want to make it clear that some model outputs have been ballistic regarding the storm over the last several days, and sadly this has been generating lots of unnecessary panic and early assumptions on social media. Now that we're getting in the range of better prediction for a tropical system like this, data is starting to align and it's time to compare some of those model differences between our main computer models. The first model I'm going to show you is the European model, which first shows signs of this tropical disturbance organizing into a low Tuesday in the Caribbean. From there, the storm gradually turns northward by Thursday into the Gulf, picking up a bit of steam while forming into a likely tropical storm or at least Category 1 strength hurricane. Its product has this entity moving to the Gulf Coast and making a late week, early weekend landfall. Meanwhile, the GFS model at least is in line with the European model for the first couple days of development into the Northern Caribbean. However, it instead rapidly steers the strengthening tropical storm or possible hurricane towards Florida and the eastern Gulf Coast as early as Friday. This is likely thanks to the pull of a stronger front still in the eastern U.S. that this particular model suggests. The positioning of the jet streams and front really is going to be key on where this likely tropical storm will go. Here's a look at the European model's mid-level jet stream flow for Wednesday night. Notice the departing jet stream dip from our front in the east and a lingering cutoff system in Texas and Oklahoma. This particular model and scenario leaves a gap for the developing storm, providing space for it to get wedged up towards an Alabama landfall, for example. The exact time frame and jet stream height with the GFS model paints a very different scenario. With no gap present in the jet stream, this would cause the storm to likely be funneled more towards the Florida Gulf Coast and inland further east as well, just like the model showed with its precipitation graphics. The only good news about the uncertainties with this storm is that they involve the tropical system fitting into tight spaces in the jet stream, and these spaces will likely have quite a bit of upper level wind trying to tear apart the cloud tops of the system. That being said though, a tropical storm or low to medium grade hurricane can still bring winds upwards of 75 to 100 miles per hour, plus life threatening fresh and saltwater flooding to coastlines. This doesn't even include the threats of tornadoes and the continued flooding that will also move inland if something forms. Take a look at this depiction of the storm from the usually tame European model. It brings a widespread swath of quick 5 to 10 inch rain totals across many of its affected areas, with locally higher amounts up to and above a foot certainly in the mix as being possible near the track line. To clear up everything I just said, here is my take on it with a tropical impact concern meter graphic for the next several days. Anybody in the yellow shade at least has a chance based on guidance for direct or indirect impacts from tropical weather late this week and beyond with those likely being low chance or minor end impacts. I'd be the most concerned or at least more weather aware the closer you go to the inside of the orange zones on screen, where I'm anticipating the most significant tropical impacts to go through assuming development occurs. These areas stand the most notable risk for direct or indirect tropical winds, heavy rain and flooding, plus even tornadoes eventually if this moves inland. Despite the quiet start to the season overall, we have definitely seen a small peak in our tropical activity right on time here throughout September. This storm will be named Helene, assuming it forms. Beyond that, we're probably going to enter another generally warm pattern across the U.S. as I was hinting at earlier, which means we're still in the waiting game for first freezes and frost for millions of Americans. I will be right here at One Nation Weather for you, delivering forecasts and critical updates whenever I deem necessary as the fall season continues to unravel in front of us. This includes continued updates on tropical storm conditions possible soon, and whatever else is going on across the USA. That's all the info I have for you right here today, and I hope you enjoyed this more engaging production in comparison to my usual forecasts. There's a high chance my next video will be Monday or Tuesday of this upcoming week, so I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button so I can catch a view from you then. Drop all comments, questions, and concerns on this video below, but for now, I love y'all, and I will catch you in the next video. Stay well out there.